I'll think of it. Now that I know what he was trying to do, I kind of liked it. it. Took me a long time to warm up to it in the theater. I think Zach did a pretty good job for what Joe wanted him to do, if that makes sense. To me, he doesn't scare me very much. He, you know, the real Ted is a scary dude, you know? His eyes are terrifying. So, mm. big round of applause for Captain Borax. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Or should we call you Chris? Chris is fun, Chris whatever. Good. Wow, this is wild, man. This Thank is you. a trip, huh? Yeah, I dig it. Well, and, you know, and one of our listeners uh, got in touch with us and said that they were friends with you, and then all of a sudden, you know, you and I started going back and forth, and I checked yeah. out some of your stuff, and... So you're a, you're a history teacher over at West. Well, I'm a, I'm a special ed teacher, but I teach history. Okay, cool. it's kind of resource special ed. Yeah, and you're a member of the historical Utah Historical Society. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you're obviously a true crime buff. I love it. Yeah, I don't I don't know where it all started, but old cop movies back in the day. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I, I consider, and I know Kylie's like this. I, I'm I'm very much into the true crime thing as well. Uh, Ted Bundy. I mean, been infatuated with that story, and I think a lot of people are infatuated with it but what do you think and i know why i i don't know i there are certain things that i for whatever reason i find interesting but what do you think it is now that we're seeing like you know the the ted i, I know the 30 year anniversary too, right. with his execution but what do you think it is where it's so popular oh it's it's so weird i it's almost like a collective unconscious thing that i've noticed you know because it I, i'm not saying like i've been doing this so long that I've seen something different, but it's almost like it just kind of cropped up around me. Yeah. But I think it's, um, uh, you know how things like that happen? You'll, you'll remember something and, and then all of a sudden you'll, somebody else will say it later. I don't know. It's a bizarre thing, but I think it's, um, it's a better story than other things that are out there for one thing. Um, you know, it's controversial. It's interesting. I mean, it's got, it's very sad too. There's a lot of sad things about it. Yeah, and uh, terrifying. I mean, it's, yeah, I think sure. that's what what makes it so appealing in a in a weird way is the fact that you know, as far as killers go, yeah, this guy. And I know there's some women that are like, he's not that good. Like, but okay, so is it, that is is subjective. <laughs> but he's not a bad looking guy, and he used that his good looks and his, his charm, his yeah. charm to to basically bait the women and 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 and. Kill the women that he, you know, like he literally was, we don't even know the number of the women that right. he killed. Yeah, it was so many that, I mean, and there's a lot of controversial numbers out there, and I, and some of it is ridiculous. You know, you hear, you'll hear things like, oh, over 100 people, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, his lawyer, John Henry Brown, is one of the guys that, and, and it may be that he was just saying that, you know, because that's something Ted told him, but. And he uh, liked to mess with, that was, I mean, to absolutely. the very end, he messed with investigators, wow. with the media. Yeah. I mean, he, he just it was in that control and loved to. He was extremely manipulative. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was a master manipulator. Uh, there's a lot of other funny things that crack me up. You know, oh, he was so intelligent. Yeah. No, he was very manipulative. Good call. And he knew how to play people. He knew how to play people at the college. He knew how to play people for Dan Evans when he was working in politics back in Washington. I mean, he was a mad player. So you're obviously interested in this and other true crime uh, stories as well. So how did you... Because it sounds like you're the go-to guy here in Utah for you know for these books and for the, the docu series and Netflix, <laughs> even for the net right for the Zac Efron yep. movie. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know about the movie, but the the Netflix thing. Okay. So what? So is it Joe Bear? What is his name? Berenger? Uh Berenger. Yeah. Yeah. So did he? Berlinger. Get, I'm sorry. Berlinger. <laughs> did he get in touch with you, or, or who got in touch with you from the? From the uh, docu series, where they're asking, you know, what kind of stuff did they ask you? Well, it was funny. A few months back, a guy named Sam Broadwin from Radical Media uh, hit me up, and I guess he works for Joe. I've figured that out since, but um, he was talking about the Netflix series, and I noticed that that guy's a producer on the new movie, the Zach movie that just came out. Yeah, but, yeah, um, it's his thing too. Yeah, and uh, they they gave me credit on the show, but I I, I thought they were just going to blow me off, but. Uh, they were asking me for a lot of contacts, some of the local folks that were, like, um, Ted was an LDS member, um, yeah, the Sixth Ward up in uh, the Avenues. Wow. And so I was lucky enough to interview a lot of those folks, and I put them on my YouTube thing. And So what is, and, yeah, so kind of tell people the YouTube, because we have it linked up, and I was watching some of your, uh, you, you call it like a crime tour? Is that what it is? Uh, like yeah, a, I don't know what else to call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're, at, you're literally going around in the car, and you're going to these certain locations. Yeah. Like, if you're wow. a, a true crime buff... Yep. And you're in, you know, where we live because he spent a good portion of his life here, or yeah. maybe not a good portion, but part of his life here. True. And yeah. he killed girl, young girls here, you know, yeah. or young women here. 
Um, yeah, I mean, what, I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> well, I was just going to say, kind of describe like what you're, it's, a, it's like a true crime tour oh, right, that you do right. with your YouTube channel, right? Right. You uh, take people on a ride with you and you're actually going from point to point and... I guess so. I, I think I, yeah, kind of, because I got bored with um, a lot of documentaries and books and things that I think it's just because I wanted more details. You know, I want to know what kind of socks he wore. Right. His stupid oh, stuff. Wow. Yeah, and, yeah. And he was a sock nut, according. He, he, really? That was Apparently, like the... yeah, he had a fetish for socks. Um, as, you know, and the, you know, people that follow the case know it. Uh, Jerry Thompson told me that he had just ridiculous amounts of socks, and they were all balled up in cute little balls mm. stuck on the shelf. What are some of the other things? It sounds like, yeah, I mean, well, and a lot of people are fascinated with them or infatuated yeah. with yeah. them. So what are True. some of the other things that you found out that m- most people probably don't know? Oh, man, there's um, there's loads of things. Um, I, I would think with that, 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 that they have to sift through. Like when they're making a docu-series yes. or a... Especially a docu, you know, there's so much information, yeah, and you got to leave things on the cutting room floor. Yeah, you certainly do, and 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 the same way I don't. There's certain aspects of the case that I'm not familiar with because it's literally it's like a a 20 year period of time from the time that they believe he started killing all the way until his execution, right? Or right before he was thrown yeah. in Florida State Prison. Or- and so, um, I mean, uh, a lot of people may not be aware that he was LDS. He was baptized. Um, <laughs> Uh, in the church, uh, there was a man named John Homer and Larry Anderson, and he was a member of the Uni- uh, University of Utah Sixth Ward Singles Ward. Yeah, I guess you would call it. Um, over twenty six years old, as basically the kids that weren't married off and that were out of college. Mm-hmm. Uh, they all lived up in the avenues on Eleventh Avenue, which coincidentally was just right down the street from his house in the avenues, about ten blocks wow. directly up the hill. Um, his girlfriend Liz Clofer. Uh, who, I don't know, she probably doesn't want people saying this, but her name is Liz Mulligan. She calls herself Liz Mulligan now. Mm. Um, and, and she's local? Uh, she or was. Or she's in Washington? She's in Washington now, but she was originally from Ogden. Okay. Um, her father was a surgeon that worked for uh, Weber State. He was on the medical board for Weber State. Um, and that's I think that's where the connection was originally. Um, so he would come out here and go skiing. Well before he actually moved out here, really. Uh huh. So he spent. He knew probably at that point when he's spending time here. And we're talking Ted Bundy, yeah. the local Ted Bundy expert. So he's spending time here, and he's probably doing like I don't know recon or whatever for you know being for a sure. murderer or a serial killer. For sure. Yeah, you know? it's creepy when you think about it. Um, yeah, I, he would come out here and go skiing. Um, and that's how the connections, uh, one thing that's interesting, I've, I've spoken with those, uh, the LDS guys that baptized him and he was baptized, baptized on the Sunnyside church up on, uh, by the zoo. Yeah. Um, Sunnyside Avenue up there. Yeah. 1850 East and, uh, Holy Sunnyside is a big church there. And that's actually where he was literally physically baptized. Wow. At what age did you say? Like, so mid twenties, probably 28, I think. Um, gosh, I'm trying to remember the date. I want to say it was October 30th. No, I'm sorry. I, I, I'd have to go back and look at that. So I think this is fascinating. Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people <laughs> around you that they probably think, but then there's probably people around you, I'm thinking friends and family, they're like, why are you so interested in this? Yeah. Right, Chris? Like, do, do you get that from friends and family? Oh, like, yeah, what's certainly. Up, what's up, weirdo? But I think <laughs> it's awesome. Do you, do you get that at all? from All the time, yeah. You do. But, you know, I... It's funny. A lot of people I've noticed seem kind of defensive about it, but I yeah. don't even really care. Yeah. I, to me, it's just history, and I don't care if you think I'm. No, weird I, or I, not. I, I yeah. love it. I think it's awesome. <laughs> I love the fact that you're so into it, and and yeah. it's fascinating to watch some of the videos because again, it takes you. He's taking you all around, like and showing you certain houses that are mentioned in certain parts of the Ted Bundy story. Wow! And yeah. like and saying that's the house there, or this is most likely the route that you he gotta drove. Do that tour. You well, gotta it's, do it's it. not like That'd a tour tour, is it? It's just you like you're just do it. Do a tour, like yeah, a tour. You should. I'd love to. I, you can make it, money. Yeah, well, I just think it'd be just be fun. Maybe make a little cash, but nobody's really hit me up for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the tour right here. You guys hit me up this weekend, man. That'd be so, awesome. What else are you working? I know you, you're a true crime buff, so you're working on some other kind of higher profile cases. Different things. Um, uh, I've been studying the uh, Manuel David case for a while. Uh, he was the guy. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Uh, the Shiloh Inn back in the old days. Okay. Um, okay. And it wasn't actually the Shiloh Inn. It was the Sahara Dunes Hotel in 1978. And is that the one with the kids in the balcony? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He um, he was basically an FLDS guy uh, from New York. And he was, uh, I could tell you some really, I shouldn't name names, but 
he uh, anyway he he was an FLDS guy who killed himself, mm. and basically he was um, stealing money from wire. He had wiretapping schemes going on. Oh wow! And I think people were giving him money for you know his flock. Yeah. And Brian David Mitchell, uh, Elizabeth Smart guy, I yeah. believe it's it's my opinion from doing a lot of research that. He was affiliated with that church. He was um, a member of that, of that guy's sect. flock. Okay. Yes. Mm. All right. Um, and he even called himself a manual. That's right. And that's yeah. what is that okay. And that would make and that's the guy who abducted Elizabeth yeah. Smart. If yeah. You know. wow. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, and uh, anyway, so I believe that he ran. A, uh, there's a local piano company that does kind of fancy piano stuff. Um, and he was friends with the guy that owns the place. It's a it's a well known place. I don't know. Yeah, we don't need to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, he borrowed that guy's pickup truck. Uh, he came in there one day and said, hey, I need to borrow your pickup truck, drove it up Immigration Canyon, and tried to kill himself by rolling down the hill. Mm. Didn't die. Crawled out of the wreck, stuck a hose in the tailpipe, stuck it in the cab, and died that way. Mm. And then, so he was up there for a couple of days, nobody noticed him. And then when he was noticed, it got back. Oh, by the way, the whole family was staying at the Shiloh Inn, and for the, the past 10 years, they'd been staying in fancy hotels. This is 1978, right? A mm-hmm. um, $100 a day per room hotels, you know, and that fluctuated from, because he stayed in Chicago and New York, different places, but he had been here for a year, and uh, he was paying for three different rooms, three suites on the 11th floor, right next to each other, and um, so that's 300 bucks a day in 1978. That's a lot of money. For a year, That's a lot right? of money now. And isn't yeah. that the hotel where the family jumped off yes, the balcony? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he um, he uh, he would order room service. There were seven children, the wife, and himself, and he would uh, order room service for everybody, uh, joining suites. And he's making his money from yeah. scams. You said, yeah. like from, uh, and then he ended up what? Ultimately, they all killed themselves. And well, so he kills himself, right? Okay. And then uh, when the wife gets word of it. Uh, she decides that she's had a divine intervention. She's been told that now it's time to join her husband in the oh, afterlife. Okay. So she forces the children or physically throws them off the roof. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and I remember wow. hearing stories of that. I mean, yeah, obviously, because I've only been here since 97. But so right. are you working on what is Are you working on a book with that or collaborating with with someone on a book? I don't, I probably should start writing. Uh, we've been talking about uh, that's one thing I've been trying to. I've been thinking about doing a four-part thing, and that's part of it, along with the Hi-Fi Murders, a Ted Bundy piece, and possibly a Sam Castanis piece. Who's that? Uh, he was the guy in the uh, in the '90s. It was actually his wife who pretty much murdered the whole family. Ooh. Oh my gosh! Uh, the little kids. Oh man! And out in West Jordan, I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, you anyway. got to keep us posted because uh, you know we, we'll, we'll keep following you and if you sure. want it's captain borax on youtube and it's a kind of fascinating dude and right? your voice man i was like sitting here just like keep talking to <laughs> yeah. you and people texted they're like his voice is sexy <laughs> oh, <that's hilarious. laughs> they call you dr borax <laughs> hey, real quick what did you think because th- we played that little clip <laughs> from uh this hack Efron movie the ted bundy movie <laughs> so you said it wasn't what you thought and yeah. without giving too much away like what, what's what's up with the movie come on man let me spoil it Oh, I'm just kidding. Oh, oh gosh. I don't, I don't <laughs> no, no, you don't. We know he kills okay. people. Yeah, yeah. He kills people. He gets ex- executed at the end. Oh, no. I didn't, know that. I didn't see that coming. Yeah. It was all right. It was um, It was a weird movie. I thought it was um, uh, It was from the perspective of his girlfriend, yeah. Liz Clover. And uh, yeah, she has written a book in the early 80s uh, called The Phantom Prince from her perspective, uh, knowing Ted Bundy. Anyway, she uh, in the true crime community, she's one of those people that everybody that's interested in the Ted case is just, ah, how do we get a hold of her? I want to oh. hear some fresh stuff from her. She ain't talking. Wow. Um, uh, Carol DeRanch, who lives here locally, was a person uh, everyone was looking at for a long time, but she has recently come out on a couple of documentaries. And um, anyway, um, the movie, I, I liked it, but it took me a long time to figure out what the heck was going on. Oh, wow. <laughs> really? In, in what way? Give us Even like, though what, I knew that. What do you mean? Like, I don't Because you said that in the clip, and I, I still don't know what you're talking about. Like, did they just play it safe? Is that what you're saying? Or? No, he had a, I, he was very clever, I think. And, and I'll try to describe, articulate it. He was, um, okay, so it's Liz's perspective. In the whole movie, you're like, oh, hey, he's this fun college guy. You get this vibe, like, she meets him in the bar, and they're mm-hmm. hanging out, partying and dancing, buying drinks, and 
Drop and change on the floor at the jukebox. You know those cliches. Mm -hmm. and of course, <laughs> Crimson and Clover. I hate that song. Man. <laughs> oh, gotta, do, 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 yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they got to stop playing that song in movie. Anyway, but so. <laughs> Oh, excuse so me. is it just a cliche <laughs> kind of a movie? Is that what it was? No, no, it wasn't cliche. It was um, uh, that part was cliche. Yeah, yeah. But um, so the whole movie, you kind of almost get sucked into this thing, like you think he's a nice guy, even though you know the case, right? And at the very end, um, he comes clean with a girlfriend, hmm. and that's kind of the spoiler thing. And then suddenly you're like, oh, I get it. Uh, so they avoid all the killing, all that stuff. Oh, so they glamorize him like we'd heard. Like they, yeah, make they him glorifying this, it a yeah. little bit. They're well, hey, he's been accused of that, but I don't think that's what he was trying to do. I think what he was trying to do is show, hey, man, anybody can get suckered by a dude like this. Ah, uh, okay. Mm. Do you All know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. And he was the original player. Totally. And wow. everybody's talking about it, and yeah. everybody's talking about him still. All right, True. so thanks for coming in. Captain Borax, we've yes, got your information. If you want to follow awesome. him on YouTube, he's a fascinating dude here. Yeah. So 971zac.com, yeah. frankieandjess.com. Uh, all right, let's come back, and we'll get into the bonus edition of Hollywood Headlines. You know what? We're actually going to talk about Zac Efron.